So we are going to divide our talk into two parts. Regina first is going to talk a little bit about the overview of St. Faustina's life. And then when she's done, I will talk about the message of Faustina, which is the divine mercy message. So I'm just going to give a brief account of the life of Sister Maria Faustina Kowalska. Kowalska, I guess. Um, she was the third of ten children. She was born in a village right in the heart of Poland, baptized Helena Faustina. She was from a poor family, so she hardly had any schooling. I think, I think it was three, three semesters they considered it. Um, but from, an early child, from her early childhood, she distinguished herself by her piety, love of prayer, obedience, and sensitivity to human misery. At the age of seven, she felt the call to religious life. And at a later age, she told her parents that she felt this calling, and they were not too keen on the idea at all. So um, she kind of did what anybody would do, and she just went on with life, consuming herself with um, rather worldly things. Um, and I love this story she shares. She wrote in her diary of her experience of being at a dance with her sisters, um, you know, doing everyday things. And she said, while everyone was having a good time, she felt her soul experience deep torments. She wrote, as I began to dance, I suddenly saw Jesus at my side. Jesus racked with pain, stripped of his clothing, all covered with wounds. She heard him <coughs> say to her, how long shall I put up with you and how long will you keep putting me off? So she wrote, at that moment, the charming music stopped and the company I was with vanished from my sight. There remained Jesus and I. I took a seat by my dear sister pretending to have a headache in order to cover up what took place in my soul. After a while, I slipped out unnoticed, leaving my sister and all my companions behind and made my way to the, to the cathedral of St. Stanislaus Kotska. She would go there and pray constantly and it was there that night of the dance that she received instructions from our Lord to go to Warsaw, where she would enter a convent. That very night, she left to go to Warsaw without really saying goodbye to anybody, um, placed uh, all of her trust in Our Lady. She had a great devotion to the Blessed Mother, and she trusted greatly in God's will. Upon arriving in Warsaw, she stayed with the Lady while she looked for a convent, the one that God spoke of, but she wasn't accept accepted anywhere. She tried countless convents, and no one accepted her until she knocked on the door of the congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy, and she was accepted there. And that's where she entered and became Sister Maria Faustina of the Blessed Sacrament when she was 19 years old. She wrote of her experience at one time of actually doubting that decision, but God spoke to her and told her that it was to that convent that he called her, so it was there she must stay. And from that day on, she said she felt happy and content. And this was yet another beautiful example of placing complete trust in God's will. Early on in her life as a religious sister, she felt especially called to pray for the souls in purgatory. This was very um, evident to her after she actually had an experience where her guardian angel um, brought her to purgatory and showed her the suffering souls there. And she asked the souls, what is, what is your greatest suffering? And they told her that their greatest suffering was longing for God. And God told her at the end of this experience, my mercy does not want this, but justice demands it. She also saw hell at one point and the souls that did not got, want God's mercy. Um, and she, she wrote that they condemned themselves to eternal death. Since that time of seeing purgatory, her, her entire life became concentrate, concentrated on constant striving for an even fuller communion with God and on working with Jesus to save souls. And it's very evident in her diary of her constant communion with our Lord. He was always present in her heart, and she said that she actually um, held a special place for him there. And in reading her words, one can truly see the great extent to which she loved Christ and his presence within her soul. But you can also see how human she is, and you can read of her efforts and her struggles every day um, she experienced on the way to sanctity, any frustrations or anything like that. So obviously she was human and did have her difficulties, but all the time, all the while, she, she meant so much to our Lord, and 
he, he sustained her completely, and he was her source of strength, she wrote. The Lord also endowed St. Faustina with many great graces, um, namely with a gift of contemplation, with a deep knowledge of the mystery of the mercy of God, with visions, revelations, the hidden stigmata, and the gift of prophecy and the reading into human souls. And in regards to prophecy, she even predicted the war on Poland to its very date. She said, however, that it was not these things which made her feel close to God, Rather, it was knowing that she was doing his will. So part of his will for her was that she write this diary. Um, and this was under the direction of her confessor, Father Sepoko, and also her spiritual director, Father Andreas. Father Sepoko is actually uh, beatified right now. Another um, part of God's will for her was to make known what we now know as the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Um, all of the words in it were given to her by our Lord. And another um, bit of his will was to have um, his image painted, bearing the inscription, Jesus, I trust in you, and I'm sure you guys have seen that many places. Um, quite sadly, she, she suffered a great deal of persecution, um, even from fellow religious sisters, uh, for, for painting, or from wanting this image to be painted. Um, and they also had their doubts about her regarding many other things but she just sacrificed and prayed for them. Um, but she said at one point that she really lived purgatory on earth, and God actually told her, you will live purgatory on earth. In her diary, St. Faustina wrote of many things, many experiences, but the greatest point she focuses on is the mission to spread the message of the divine mercy of God. In short, her, mis her mission is to remind us of the forgotten truths of our faith about God's merciful love, and to prompt us to respond to that merciful love. He said, the more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. St. Faustina conveyed to us new forms of devotion to his divine mercy to lead to the revival of the spiritual life in the spirit of Christian trust and mercy. She trusted in his mercy without limit, and in turn to her, he entrusted his great mission to proclaim his message of mercy directed to the whole world, as well as the many promises which are attached to those who trusted in his love and mercy. He, he told her, Today I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. You are the secretary of my mercy. I have chosen you for that office in this life and the next, to make known to souls the great mercy I have for them and to exhort them to trust in the bottomless depths of my mercy. And so she took on that office, and it was not easy, um, but she did it with great trust and, and joy. It did weaken her, though, um, suffering and interceding for sinners. Um, during her postulancy, in fact, um, and even before that, really, her health declined greatly. Um, so she was always a bit weak because of this. Um, but she also, uh, on top of suffering for souls and everything um, else, she, she experienced the dark night of the soul um, and underwent many personal physical sufferings, all of which did bring her ultimately closer to God. Um, she suffered from tuberculosis, which spread to uh, and attacked her lungs, and this is what ultimately led to her death. In months of suffering before death, um, before her death, God told her, mankind will not have peace until it trusts in my mercy. So she was still carrying out her mission on her deathbed. Um, and she wrote in her diary, I feel that my mission will not end with my death, but will only begin with it. O oh, doubting souls, I will part the veils of heaven to convince you of God's goodness, that you might cease to wound the sweetest heart of Jesus with your disbelief. God is love and mercy. And she died mystically united with God on October 5th, 1938, at the age of 33. And she is now known as the Apostle of Divine Mercy. So now Dan will touch more on the message, along with um, bits of information on the, the image, as well as um, some facts about Pope, John Paul II, Pope yes. St. John Paul II. Thank you, Regina.